And Svotkin looked ready as well. Remember, Eric will be on the plate for game one throughout the entirety of the elimination rounds as the first overall seed. A ponder off a tropical island is where our quarterfinals will begin. Smith very quickly keeping with the ponder. He is happy with what he's found, and Force of Will was the draw. An issue that Esper Deathblade has in some matchups is the mana base is pretty fragile, and so you're really liable to Wasteland, which is one of the marquee cards for Delver strategies and lands and a bunch of other decks in the format. None of that hanging out in Gabriel's deck. So Eric can be very, very liberal with just fetching for dual lands, just getting all of his mana online. Gabriel can't punish him game one. And in the post-board games, the way Gabriel can punish him is something where it doesn't matter what lands Eric got yeah. because it's Blood Moon and they're all locked. Power level on Esper Deathblade, very, very high. But as you mentioned, Wasteland is a huge problem for the deck if you can break up the mana. Now, this deck does have a little bit of reliance on Deathrite Shaman for that mana fixing as well. Yep. I mean, Esper Deathblade, to me, is just, this is a collection of individually powerful legacy cards, more than any other deck in Legacy. Here's a copy of Thoughtseize, an individually powerful card. Yep. Just look up and down that roster. Deathrite Shaman, Stoneforge Mystic, True Name Nemesis, Snapcaster Mage. Now Chase Friends Prodigy's in the mix as well. Three cops to dig through time. Yep. Another addition. Source to Plowshares, Liliana the Veil, Chase the Mind Sculptor. Ponder, Brainstorm, Thoughtseize. It's just all individually very, very good cards. Not a lot in the way of synergy. But if you can cast all of these spells, yep. life's probably pretty good. Brainstorm here for Gabe in response to Eric's Thoughtseize. So he wants to hide some information. Looks like he's happy with what he's hidden. Brainstorm is done resolving. Now we'll see Shvotkin's hand. A lot of lands over there and a Terminus, so this decision is very easy. Most likely just protecting two spells on the top of his deck. Yep. And not hard for those spells to be better than Terminus. So there you go. See if Smith has a follow-up here. It appears he's not, so Shvotkin will draw. Picked up a copy of Ponder. Pretty middling hand to start here for Gabe. Not really doing very much. We'll see if he's able to find anything useful with Ponder. Looks like he's found a couple copies of Terminus in that Ponder, so he's going to have to shuffle. So right now we know that Gabe has five lands in his hand. Yeah, and that's really bad news here for Shvotskin here. Because he has fetch lands in his hand, if that Ponder showed a couple good cards and something bad, he could have gotten a lot of selection out of it. Instead, the top three was so bad, he just has to shuffle, and the Ponder loses a lot of power when that happens. Picked up a copy of Force Will pass the turn back. He doesn't have a blue card to go along with it, so Smith will draw. He'll sacrifice Flooded Strand very quickly. Down to 17. Make that 16, actually. A couple of fetches and Thoughtseize. Look at himself. Let's make sure this is a scrub land. Yes, scrub Got land. It. There's a Savannah in his deck, too. He's going to try to trick me. Yeah. Savannah, same art, slightly more green. Yeah. Here's Liliana. And you're, you're watching Esper Deathblade in action. There's nothing fancy about this. Yep. This is just, here's a lot of power for mana just every single turn of the game. You have a couple catch-all answers to break up synergies from the other side of the table. And you hope that this is good enough, and it often is. Liliana is still out there. The draw for Shvotskin last turn was a copy of Source of Plowshares. Here's a brainstorm for Eric. That'll resolve. In my experience, Liliana the Veil vale is very powerful against Miracles when they do not have Divining Top, and something the Miracles that can work around when they do have Divining Top, because you can play a very, very good game off the top of your deck with Divining Top and ways to shuffle. This is the bad scenario here for Schwatzkin, which is his hand's going to get attacked, and he may not be able to survive Liliana going ultimate, stripping away most of his lands. Yeah, the thing I like that Eric is probably going to try to do here is leave Force of Will plus blue card in hand, in mm -hmm. case top comes off the top of the deck. Exactly. Because it's so important to counter. And there's Sensei's Divining Top. That's the draw right now. So if I'm Smith and Shvatskin cast this top, I can't counter it fast enough. Let's see if Eric does have some interest in countering this. This, to me, is worth a fight. It's a fight under normal circumstances, and with... With Eric having Lily on the veil, I would not allow him to have Divining Top. Yeah. Because the way this game is going for Eric, we're going to play this low resource game. Right. And Eric has way more proactive cards in his deck than Gabriel does. So if both players are empty handed, Eric is going to draw better. 
some things can muck that up, especially in Treat the Angels. But as long as Gabriel is pinned on mana, Intrigue can only do so much. And Eric just has more draws like Snapcaster, Ma uh, Snapcaster Mage, things like Stoneforge, Mystic, True Name Nemesis, just things he can put on the table. Gabriel has a lot more reactive cards. Liliana's going up. Smith will discard Source Flosher, so will Schwatzkin. Smith empty handed. Schwatzkin will play a Flooded Strand and now a Counterbalance, so both players are empty handed now. And we'll see how Smith wants to continue using Liliana here. He'll start by playing a Deathrite Shaman. Trigger, Counterbalance, that's a Caracas. Liliana will go up, neither player has a discard, but Smith doesn't want to lose the Planeswalker just yet. Caracas will enter the battlefield. Will Smith pull the trigger on the ultimate here is the question. This seems like a fine spot. You get to keep the Liliana in play. Shvatskin's empty handed, so there's not much to do anyway. Now it's all about how to do the split. And this is kind of the tricky part with Liliana and her ultimate. I think that I would probably split counterbalance and the only white sources of mana against the blue lands. I think that's, that's how you squeeze him the most. I think Eric agrees with you. Boom. Look at you two on the same Woo! page. You can just go down there and play for him. Yeah. Schwachkin will draw. There's a polluted delta. Death Right Shaman's going to go removing some things now. With Liliana Ultimates, you want to make someone make a choice between A or B. And that's the most A or B split that Eric can make. Savannah is the land there for Smith. Schwachkin is revealing a miracle. Terminus will take your Death Right Shaman, though Death Right Shaman will get to activate one more time. So Schwachkin will go down to 16. For Smith, he's just got to draw another threat now. Yep. He's got to love his positioning. He really has to hope that Schwachkin doesn't draw a top. But besides that, life is pretty good. I suppose Entreat the Angels is pretty scary right now, too. Jace the Mind Sculptor is also a dangerous draw. Schwatzkin's got had two of those in this deck. He just draws the planes, however. Smith with the Flooded Shram. Liliana going up. We might see Liliana go ultimate again. Schwatzkin. Drew his card and kept it. Here's Deathrite Shaman. Their source of plowshares to take care of it. I'm a little bit surprised that Eric is not using a Wasteland here as it can blunt some of the impact if Gabriel happens to rip and treat the Angels. Would be bad news if it happened here. Here's Snapcaster Mage. Now that's a good draw. That can hit a Brainstorm or a Ponder. Looks like it will be a Ponder. Looks like maybe Sensei's Divine Top is among those cards. See, the thing is, this Liliana lock is relatively good, but it's not game over good. No. Something's got to go along with it. Pressure's got to go along with this. Absolutely. And, and, and it's all at risk of getting blown up at a moment's notice if Gabriel finds one of his Planeswalkers, Sensei's Divining Top, and Treat the Angels. Dig Through Time. Dig Through Time is another problem. So while Smith is in the lead right now, it doesn't even feel like it anymore because Stampcaster Mage has flashback to Ponder, and Schwatchkin has found something he's very happy with because he did not shuffle with Ponder. Uh, uh, Schwatchkin's had some good fortune here in the face of this Liliana. He's drawn lands on a lot of turns where if he drew counterspells, he would just lose them. The turn that he drew Swords to Plowshares, Eric drew a creature, so he's able to do something with the Swords to Plowshares instead of having that discarded for no effect. And now Snapcaster Mage represents a huge draw, and, and Schwatchkin is reassembling his resources. Yeah, Dig Through Time is the card. And that is a pretty nice one to have right now. And you see Eric's reaction. Nothing he can do. Yeah, all the information's on the table. Nothing to be done about it. Now the onus is on Smith to have a big top deck. But for now, Schwatzkin's going to take a look at the top seven cards. He'll take two with him. If you're Gabe, you're looking for a Sensei's Divining Top here for sure. And, the, you know, the, the mana here that Eric is not wasting Schwatzkin off of is relevant. He has a land left over. If he finds Divining Top in this top seven, he can use all of his mana this turn putting Divining Top into play. Dig Through Time is done resolving. Schwatchkin will pass the turn back over to Smith. There's a Brainstorm. Smith will take a look at the top three. Jace the Mind Sculptor in there. Well, okay. Huge. One good top deck deserves another.
So here comes Jace. Schwachkin looks like he's going to brainstorm in response. Maybe try to find an answer. So three cards coming, two will have to go back. One is a brainstorm. Two we don't get a great look at. And the third one is a Pluto Delta. I believe it's actually Counterspell. Oh, the actual factual. Yes. Two cards are going to go back. Brainstorm done resolving. Now Jace is on the battlefield. Smith will draw three. He knows a couple of them. Keep in mind he has not activated Liliana just yet. Curious to see how he wants to go about using the card. I, I, I really like... Uh, I believe he... Okay, so he has to put one more back here yeah. from the Brainstorm. I like taking a source of plowshares, plowing the Snapcaster Mage, and then plussing Liliana. Sure. So now two cards go back. There's the plow to take care of the Snapcaster Mage. So that's gone. Now you plus Liliana. Shvashkin will have to lose a card. Looks like he'll lose land. They want to make sure Lilia was on the right amount. Yep. It was on five coming into the turn, so it goes up to six. Jace is on three. Now we head Shvashkin's way. Looks like he's going to draw Council's Judgment, yep. perhaps. There's just a little confusion there. Eric was actually, the mistake Eric made was actually in his disadvantage big time, because he was trying to put two, uh, keep two cards, discard one of them to Liliana, and then source the plowshares. Yeah. Doesn't work that way. Yeah. Here's a brainstorm instead for Shvashkin. You can see the cards he's working with there. Counterbalance, Council's Judgment, Force of Will, Counterspell, so looks like Counterbalance and Force of Will are going to go away. Counterspell and Council of Judgment are going to stay in the grip. And the Judgment, yeah, I have to imagine it's going to take care of Jace. It's ugly to lose your Counterspell to Liliana plussing and Liliana going ultimate next turn, but Jace uncontested is just game over. Yeah. Shvachkin can potentially still work through this Liliana, even going ultimate a second time, but Jace is, is a runaway in this spot. Smith's going to sacrifice a fetch land. Go grab himself an underground sea. I believe the card he drew for the turn was a brainstorm. And it does not appear as though this is going to resolve because if I'm Schwachkin, I'm going to use my counterspell maybe? I guess, I guess not. It's a touch risky. Now, Smith well, uh, looks like he found a copy of Dick Through Time, but Gabe still has that counterspell. Yeah, I, I, I like this play from Scottson's position. The most likely thing that happens is Eric keeps a spell and casts it. Sure. You know, Scottson's down to one card. He didn't counterspell the Brainstorm, so uh, you could probably get a, a more valuable card out of Smith's deck by waiting. Might be able to rope him in. Yeah, the worst case scenario is Smith brainstorms into three lands, plays a land and pluses the Liliana, but then he's Brainstorm locked. Sure. Two lands, you know, you don't mind that either. There's a counterspell. That'll take care of the dig through time. And this is a spot again where, where Eric has gotten punished for not using the wasteland. Yeah. Spotkin's had multiple turns here where he's used all of his mana. I suppose the question is, what is wasteland going to get that's better? Eric Smith has a big mana advantage. I suppose he wants to get in a spot where if he draws Batter Skull, he can cast it and protect it. But when you have Liliana going, I, I suppose there's also an argument for if, you're, if you plan on going ultimate with Lilian again, you can split the Tundras against each other, then Wasteland, and then Svachin's really down on resources. Uh, I like this split here. Three islands, counterbalance versus the two non-basics in the planes, because if he keeps the two non-basics in the planes, you get to blow one up. And if he keeps all the islands in the counterbalance, well, okay. Yep. Maybe you split the Tundras there? I think the other arguable split is just putting the counterbalance in the other stack because then you can wasteland and Gabriel's down to Plains Tundra counterbalance against your Liliana. Sure. I would want to make it really juicy there for Schwatkin to keep the pile that has a Tundra in it so you can use your wasteland. And I think you can do that by giving him the counterbalance. Little draw go action again now as Liliana continues to tick up. Players will discard. Marsh Flats there. For Smith here, Sensei top off the top. Huge draw. Yep. 
Now, Spotchkin's still got a lot of work to do here. He's got no white mana, really light on resources, no cards in hand, playing empty handed the rest of the way, but this is a good start. His Entreat the Angels bit the dust. Here's Spell Pierce. Going to check with Counterbalance. All right, Swords and Plowshares will just counter that. And for what's worth, Smith knows that's on top of the deck now. So yep. a little bit of info there. And did he draw a good one? Because he's tapping mana pretty quick. Might be a dig? Yes, okay. Svochkin is going to spin, maybe find a dig of his own. Ponder, Brainstorm, Source of Plowshares. Not an answer to dig through time. The dig is going to resolve here for Smith. The one thing that Eric will play around here is the one mana spell being on top of the deck. Yeah. Which is trivial for him to do anyway because there's the Divine Top in play. Mm -hmm. So that's already, he's already priced into that. Well, it appears as though Eric has found two cards that, he, that he's happy with. Other five will go to the bottom. Now he goes with another dig through time. Okay. That's his third one. That's the last one. And if, the fir if, if this one resolved, the first one of the turn, safe to assume this one's resolving as well. Yeah, you can accelerate this process a little bit because it's not going to get counted. So Smith is looking for more cards now. And it looks like he's found two that he's happy with yet again. Those will go to the bottom. Dig is done resolving. Looks like he's found a copy of Stoneforge Misty. Force of Will in hand as well. Here's an attempt at Stoneforge Mystic. That's going to resolve, so now it's time to search up an equipment. Batter Skull's the weapon of choice. And for Schwachkin, he does have an answer to Stoneforge with Swords of Plowshares up there, but it does not appear that he has an answer to batter skull just yet. And Svachkin's also lacking white mana. And even if the Stoneforge Mystic gets killed, Smith has more than enough mana to just deploy the batter skull. This is the upshot of Smith not using the Wasteland earlier on in the game, is that he's got enough mana to really maximize batter skull shenanigans. Here's a ponder from Gabe. Take a look at the top three cards. Jace the Mind Sculptor among them, but he is a mana short of that. And this is gone to show you the power of Liliana over the course of the game. And, you know, it's weird because it appears it hasn't done much and it has ultimated twice though it hasn't done a lot with those ultimates, but it has bottlenecked Schwachkin's resources as far as mana is concerned, and he's just going to concede the game knowing that there's really no way out of this for him. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, you know, there was not one single moment you could point to where Smith got that game. He was just slowly but surely pushing on all of Schwachkin's resources. Uh, Schwachkin could never really assemble anything of note, and the, the second Liliana ultimate was, was really the nail in the coffin. At that point, Schwachkin didn't have enough resources to work with. Well, Eric Smith's going to win game number one here over Gabriel Svochkin. S for Deathblade up a game over Miracles, which means we're going to take a look at the sideboards. Both players will get each other's deck lists so they can see him as well. And we will start with Svochkin with his other sworn cannons, two Monastery Mentors, Adventure Shaper Savant, two Rest in Peace, two Flusterstorm, two Pyroblast, two Vendillion Click, a single copy of Wear Tear, and the big one, two copies of Blood Moon. Two copies of Blood Moon are excellent for this matchup. Smith is locked by it. He can basically cast Batter Skull, Umazawa Shite, and he's got whatever he's got in play at the time, unless he has Death Rite Shaman. Uh, I do like Monastery Mentor in this matchup as well. I don't think Shvachkin can really hold the game forever with top plus counterbalance. Smith has a good spread of costs in his, the deck, and Abrupt Decay is also in Smith's sideboard. So I think he needs to diversify his angles of attack a little bit. I think the Pyroblast, the Wear Tear to answer equipment, the Vendillion Clicks, I like all these cards. I, I think Svachkin wants to become a little bit better at playing an empty-handed or resource-like game and just needs to bring in some more individually powerful cards, get away from all the reactive stuff in his deck when Smith's attacking his hand like this. For Smith, he's got a Pithing Needle, a Supreme Verdict, a Telemint Performance, three Meddling Mages, a Sylvan Library, two Abrupt Decays, two Fluster Storms, two Surgical Extractions, a Zealous Persecution, and another copy of Jace the Mind Sculptor. So some easy ones to bring in here. The other copy of, of Jace is great for this sort of matchup. The two copies of Abrupt Decay and the Sylvan Library. I think those are all great cards for playing this kind of game. Abrupt Decay, good against Counterbalance, good against Blood Moon. I think the Pithing Needle can come in as well as an answer to Sensei's Divining Top. Then there's the second tier of cards that I don't know if Smith's going to want to touch, but maybe he does. Three copies of Meddling Mage, two copies of Flusher Storm. They're not the most powerful cards in the matchup, but uh, they are also, you know, they're not off the table. They're, they're good enough where Smith may bring them in. You know, you know, Smith's got some cards that he can sideboard out here pretty easily in Source of Plowshares. 
Now, yeah. where he goes from there is a good question. Well, the source to plowshares is an interesting case because game one, it is probably Smith's worst card in the deck. But with Fotchkin probably bringing in copies of Monastery Mentor, I'm not sure if Smith can cut all the, the plows out. Maybe he can go down to three copies or something like that. But uh, with Fotchkin having these Monastery Mentors, I don't think he can cut the full four. Interesting little back and forth game on how many he's supposed to sideboard out. And it, he has to guess if Fotchkin is going to board in those mentors himself. Exactly. I, I think Swatchkin has to. If you saw what happened in game one there, it's very hard for him to piece together all the different things he's trying to do as a Miracles player, and he just needs to get some more normal Magic cards into his deck. Well, these players will shuffle up here for game number two. Gabriel Swatchkin will be on the play. But in the meantime, we will talk about Star City Games Game Night, the very popular promotion. August is just about over. It ends on Monday, so you don't have a ton of time to get Furious George. Right. Every month we send out new kits with pins and tokens with a new animal on them. This is the August kit, as Cedric mentioned, running out of time to get this. But September is right around the corner. You see the Kraken. Too late to sign up for this one. But if you want to get signed up for October with the Hippo, head over to StarCityGames.com slash Game Night for more information or contact your Star City Games organized play representative. We do get ready here for game number two. If we do have updates for you guys on our backup match, we will certainly let you know. It's between Matthew Long playing Blue Red Delver and Alex Bustacki playing Grixis Delver. However, they're still in game number one, which is a bit of a surprise. I expected that one to be a little bit quicker than this one. Uh, th those games can bog down, especially when one person gets ahead and the other person gets a young Pyromancer and starts bogging down the ground. Sure. It can get slow. Someone's got to find Shining Nemesis to put it on easy mode. And, and listen, any ponder, brainstorm, fetch land matchup, can go very long. Especially with a lot on the line. Oh, yeah. Take a couple more seconds to think about this Brainstormer Ponder. But we had a pretty speedy game one over here. Yeah, by, we the, did. by the standards of the matchup. I think at the 17 minute mark, 18 minute mark, uh, Schwatzkin tapped the mat when he knew that he was Brainstorm locked and just out resourced in a way he couldn't come back from. Yeah, not a spot he wants to be in at all there. Eric Smith, former invitational champion here two years ago. I know it's not back-to-back. -back. There's a little gap there, but it would be impressive to see him win in this building again and qualify for the Players' Championship. Yep. All right, and Smith has, you know, he still has had his results over the last couple of years, but uh, certainly not as big of an achievement as the Invitational win. That's still yep. the feather on the cap here. There is the Goblin token that Eric Smith won for winning the season Invitational two years ago. Probably the most sentimental token for sure because it's dedicated to his friend and easily one of my favorite ones done. Mm -hmm. First of all, it looks just like him. Yes. But well, it, if Eric Smith was a goblin. Correct. Correct. With the ears and the... And the beard is still there. The tattered rags yeah. <laughs> instead of, you know, a shirt and a cap. But I know what you mean. The, Thank the, the, you. It is definitely his likeness. Well, one of the best ones ever done and certainly the most sentimental is he did dedicate that token to a passed away friend. And we'll see what the next token will be if he's able to win this one. Svotchkin will be on the play here. These two good friends, by the way. A lot of jersey in the top eight. I know you're proud. We still run this. Not entirely <laughs> sure what this is, but... Magic the Gathering. Congratulations. Yeah, we still run this. Congratulations nonetheless. Svotchkin going to take a mulligan. Not happy with his opening hand. We'll see if Smith is happy with his seven. So when I go to Ohio and there's a bunch of Ohio people in the top eight, do I get to say we still run this? If that, if since that, it's if more that, likely that there will be Ohio players in the top eight since we're in Ohio? If, uh, if that ever happens, we'll cross that bridge, you know? Okay. Just want to make sure. As, as long as we're just making outlandish statements, I wanted to make one too. Now I just hope Steve Mann wins. <laughs> so, so there's that well if there's any community of magic players with more hubris than the new jersey community it's the florida community Stay i think sure. you want to pick a different horse no no you, I, I don't know if there's another <laughs> horse to pick so Svoskin does not look thrilled at the six he's looking at might be convincing himself to try to keep this one There's some matchups where Miracles has time to draw out of. They, they get some awkward opening hands. Yeah. Dead ends and weird situational cards and, and Miracles they can't really cast. Esper Deathblade really punishes you for those kind of opens because they can attack your hand with discard, play threats that require immediate answers, and still play with you in the long game. Flooded Strand 
is where Smith started. Shvachkin's got a flute to Delta and Arid Mesa. It's just a couple of lands on both sides. Smith will sacrifice his flooded strand, it appears. He's going to go down to 19. Remember, the dynamic of the matchup changes entirely post-board because Eric has to be concerned at all times with Blood Moon. So even something like turn two Stoneforge Mystic in the spot, if Eric doesn't have Force of Will, can get him killed. Yep. So he has to play the game entirely differently. Blood Moon is the big problem. And you might be wondering, does Eric Smith have any basics? No. No. No, he does not. Yeah, typically the, the old Savannah Underground Sea mana base is not able to fit in an island as well. Probably can't fit one of those, no. no. And if anything, Eric would want a forest and a swamp so he could still cast Abrupt Decay. Really hard to squeeze in a forest and a swamp. And the card he really wants to draw, of course, is Deathrite Shaman. Yeah. So he can operate underneath the Blood Moon at least a little bit. Uh, but, but with Fodgkin having Terminus and the Source of Plowshares in the deck, if that comes up, great, but that can't be the plan. Yeah. He's just got to prevent it from entering play or generate such an overwhelming advantage on the board that even if Blood Moon shows up, he can still win. The second thing's very hard to do. Mr. Rainforest is land number two here for Smith. And he'll just pass the turn back. Nothing to do on his second turn of the game. And what's different about this game is that Smith is just going to have to be very cautious the entire time because he's always just going to be respecting and be worried about Blood Moon. Yes, he has to play very passively here. Now, the question, of course, is do you just play the game where it's like, hey, if you have Blood Moon, you have Blood Moon. But it's hard to do that because if he has Blood Moon, he just immediately loses. Yes. He can't function. So just trying to go over the top of it and hope your opponent doesn't draw it is definitely a strategy we see people make. But in this instance, he can't cast spells then. Also, Schwachkin might be pretty conservative with how he deploys his Blood Moon into open mana. Uh, you know, because it is a game-winning play in most spots, Schwachkin is not going to want to just, all right, here it is on turn three. And if you have Abrupt Decay or a counter spell, there it resolves. So as long as Smith holds up mana, Schwachkin does have an incentive to try to find other things to do to soften Smith up to clear the path for Blood Moon. Smith's going to play a Stoneforge Mystic. Looks like Svotchkin might be casting a Brainstorm in response. And they're going to check a little something here. It's unclear as to what, but when we do find out exactly what the table judge and the head judge are discussing, we will certainly let you know. We do have a quick update here for you guys. Yeah, well, we're going to hop back. We're going to hop back to the booth really quick while we do figure this out. But uh, Alex Pastecki, our Grixis Delver player, does win game number one here over Matthew Long, who is playing blue red at Delver. Uh, again, it's uh, I think the matchup was pretty close. You know, one side you've got Young Fire Mansion, the other you don't. But on the blue red Delver side, you have Trinity Nemesis, which is a trump card in the matchup. Um, I like Grixis Delver in that matchup, but I do think it's pretty close on both sides. There's a lot of the same cards, and when you're comparing the, you know, what are the lights out cards in the matchup. You know, Young Pyromancer on one side of the table versus True Name Nemesis. Now, Young Pyromancer is a lot easier to kill, so it's not guaranteed to win the game, but uncontested, it, it generates an overwhelming advantage pretty fast. In the Delver matchups, I typically look at what card is cheaper. Because of Days and Wasteland, there's no guarantee your three mana spells resolve. Yep. It's especially the case in, in the Teamer Delver matchups, where I assume True Name Nemesis is the trump card, right? Not really the case, because no one gets a three mana. Yeah. Or if you get a three mana, you've already won the game. Yep. The Grixis and blue-red versions of the deck aren't quite that extreme because there's no stifles involved, but it's still much of the same problem between, you know, Red Blast and Flusterstorms and Dazes and Wastelands. Three mana spells can be pretty challenging to resolve. So I, I like the deck that has the most powerful spells in the matchup that are two mana or less, and so I give the nod to the deck with Young Pyromancer in it. Understandable. Understandable. Well, it looks like... Aha, uh -huh. okay. So, these players are shuffling up here for game number three. And we can tell you why. Eric Smith missed presented his deck. 59 cards. Not a good time to do that. Pretty impressive for that, for the, uh, the judge involved to be able to find that out. Yeah, I guess just count uh, the sideboard. Okay. There you go. So, uh, this is a large misstep for I Eric did, at this point. I did not know that the judge counted the sideboard. I thought the judge could just look at the deck, know it was 59 cards. Just a sniper. Boom. Boom. 59. I'm positive. Yes. So, 
as we're going to get ready for game number three now, as we're accelerating our way through the quarterfinals. Even faster than game one. Yeah, so, so very impressive, I must say. <laughs> a situation here for Smith, which is obviously unfortunate for him making that mistake, and I'm sure many Magic players have made it before, though not in this sort of high leverage situation. Just got to recompose. You're ready to go again for game number three. I think that's all you can do. Yeah, uh, you got to, the game's, the game's done with. There, there's nothing to be gained here. Yeah. Count your sideboard next time. And move on. Yeah, and then move on. Yeah, fair enough. It's also a surprising mistake to make in this kind of spot because usually when you're, you know, you're testing your matchup the night before, you're getting in as many games as possible, you usually have a very good sense of how you're sideboarding. You know what cards you're bringing in, you know what cards you're bringing out. Presenting 59 cards in round five of the Swiss, I think that happens, you know, more often than people know, just on accident. But here it, it is a little surprising just because you usually are, you know, these seven are in, these seven are out. You know exactly what you're doing. Maybe it changes on play or draw, but in any case, nothing for Smith to do about it now. Just got to shake it off, move to the next one. I guess the play first. We're looking for positives. Smith can just imagine that he was locked by Blood Moon. Boom. He, he casts Stoneforge Mystic. Shvachkin untapped and cast Blood Moon. Smith had no counter, and now we're game. going on. We're going on to game three just as easily. Smith got him to one with the Stone Forge Mystic because Shvachkin couldn't find an answer. Then right. he found an answer, <laughs> and then that was it. See, there's your narrative for game two. Right. Col a close one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just couldn't quite get there. You do see the sideboards available here for both players. We keep talking about Blood Moon because it is an A plus against Smith's deck if it is on the battlefield for Shvachkin. Smith has got to make sure that that just never happens. And Smith has got some real haymakers here in Sylvan Library. Abrupt Decay, another copy of Jace, so. And being on the play is a huge deal for Smith. In, in these matchups, often play versus draw, the slow control matchups, it, it's, it matters, but not a lot. On Smith's side, it does matter a lot because he has threats like Stoneforge Mystic that he really wants to tap out for early on in the game. And on the draw, he can't really tap out for Stoneforge Mystic without incurring a huge risk. On the play, it's safe because Foxen can't hammer a turn a, a Blood Moon in that spot while Smith is tapped out. They're both happy. Deathrite Shaman is where Smith will begin, and it's a great place to start in this matchup. He'll need some fetch lands, of course, but got to be happy with starting there. Here's a Sensei's Divine Top for Shvachkin. Smith with no force of will. So that's in. Looks like Smith may have a Thought Seize to cast, and he does. So we'll get a good look at Shvachkin's hand. There's at least a Council's Judgment over there. Along with a Counterbalance, a Terminus, and a couple of lands. Volcanic Island, Polluted Delta, Flooded Strand. I'm assuming we're just going to be removing the Counterbalance here. Yeah, break up the combo. I mean, Council's Judgment is a little bit annoying, but yep, slow answer to things. I mean, I suppose there's an argument for taking Council's Judgment if you have Abrupt Decay, but it feels like the Abrupt Decays are on Blood Moon detail. Yeah. You don't want to just give that up if you can avoid it. Smith does have a Wasteland in hand, though I imagine he kind of wants to sandbag that a little bit. Yep. Especially seeing a hand on the other side of the table where there's a non-basic land in the Volcanic Island. You would prefer to conceal that information if you can. Smith will sacrifice a flooded strand, go down a little bit lower to 17. And there is a scrub land. Got it. Thank you. I would be upset about the fact that they look so alike, but that was like 20 years ago. Yeah. So our direction was a little bit different. Yeah, what can you do? Here's another copy of Deathrite Shaman. First one's coming across. And pass that turn back. See, now there's your scrub land. Right. See that one? That looks like a land. Now Savannah, you know, basically the same card. They're basically the same card. Different artists, interestingly enough. I would assume that the same artist was responsible for both I pieces. I actually didn't know that. From a distance, they do look like the same card. Shvachkin spins the top on upkeep to ensure that he draws a Brainstorm. We rarely see this confusion in Legacy because typically your deck can't possibly win if it contains both Scrubland and Savannah. Yes, yeah, uh, com com combo deck. Right, but now we're, we're here, so this is coming up. Yeah. 
The old Savannah scrubland, no blue card strategy. Yep. Not really a great one in Legacy. I'm trying to play with Sylvan Safekeeper and Ty Hollow Sculler. All right. You can never win. That's just, glad, glad we got that that's out That's just the a harsh reality. <laughs> Yeah, the Dark Maverick fans are blowing you up on Twitter, fam, yeah. right now. All, all four of all them. All zero of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here's an underground C. There's Snapcaster Mage, maybe. Yes. We might have attempted a thought seize here in just a moment. Svachkin might respond. He'll respond to the thought seize, it appears. He'll do that by cracking his polluted delta. Now, he does have Brainstorm in hand, as well as a copy of Terminus, so it looks like that's what he's probably trying to set up. Yeah. At this point now, with, with Eric having... Deployed a lot of creatures at the table. Really good setup for Terminus. That is a non-basic for his Wasteland to hit, so that's certainly nice. And here's Brainstorm. So three cards coming here for Swatchkin. Two will have to go back, and you have to imagine one of them is going to be Terminus as he picked up a couple of lands there off of the Brainstorm. Looks like two Tundras and a Caracas. There's the grip. Well, write all those lands down, I guess. Two Tundras, Caracas. Volcanic Island Flooded Strand. Brainstorm doing a great job against that Thought Seize. And what's tough here, if you're Smith, is you'd be dead to Blood Moon right now, it appears. Yeah. Well, not necessarily dead dead, because he does have the Death Rites in play, but it would be really bad it, news. It would be pretty bad news. He could still cast an Abrupt Decay. There's two lands in the graveyard, so... Well, Terminus isn't good news either, and that just showed up. There's a fourth land for Smith, and he'll just pass the turn back. Svachkin going to start spinning that top, start doing what Miracles does. He'll untap and take a draw step. Copy Pluto Delta added to the grip. And this is a really good spot for Svachkin to be in. His hand is immune from being attacked because it's all lands, but he wants more mana because he's got expensive things to do. Dividing top in play, plenty of ways to shuffle the deck, no pressure on the other side of the table. Uh, Smith has nothing going on. He's got five lands on the battlefield, and I believe two lands in hand. A wasteland and a tropical island, so his hand certainly stinks. And Svochkin is purposely making his hand bad because he's floating the good cards on top of his deck. Wear tear the draw here for Gabe. Smith, I think, may have just drawn another land. Yep, another Pluto Delta. Svochkin going to spin the top. The other thing here is, with nothing going on on the Smith side of the table, if Schwarzkin draws Blood Moon, he might just let it rip, see what's going on over there. Yeah. There's not a lot of counter spells, and um, Smith, again, is, is beat if that happens. Council's Judgment to draw here for Gabe. There's Volcanic Island. Smith will draw. Can he find something that does something? He's tapping mana. Liliana. All right. It's better than nothing. But Schwarzkin's very well set up to handle this. Oh, Besides yeah. the Council's Judgment, he's the one with the resource advantage and Divining Top in play. Tropical Island, the discard there for Smith. Caracas, the discard for Schwachkin. Gabe, think about drawing a card with Top. Maybe Entreat the Angels? Okay. They'll sacrifice the Flutter Strand to help pay for it. Even willing to give up the Top here. Yeah. This is a very bold move because if Smith counters this, now Spotkin's way behind. It is a little risque. Look at Spotkin's going to do it for two to try to play around Spell Pierce. Might do it for more, though. He could go for the knockout punch, but it looks like it's just going to be for two. So two Angel tokens on the way. Now Spotkin will draw a card. Going to come across for eight. And it looks like he'll come across for four and then take down Liliana, too. So I think everything's going at Liliana there in case Smith has sourced to plowshares. Sure. He wants to make sure that Liliana is taken care of. Well, here's Chase the Mind Sculptor. 
It's a good replacement for Sensei's dividing top. I've seen worse. Fate seal you. Crack a fetch line, Will Smith. He's going to go down to 10. Ah, he's going to take a quick look. He's got to know. Yeah. Smith in some real trouble now. A little surprise for Shvachkin there to be fate sealing Smith given all the fetch lands in play. Uh, I don't mind Shvachkin fate sealing himself. Just scry a little bit and. I would have preferred fate seal myself or brainstorm. I don't like fate sealing Smith yeah. there because there are three fetch Just lands. Just so many fetch lands in play. Yep. If there's only one in the next turn, you start really locking him. That's different, but it's not where we're at. Stoneforge Mystic. Shvachkin's got that covered multiple ways. Has a Jace that can bounce it, has got a wear tear, and a Council's Judgment in yep. hand. So he does not care about the one-two core artificer at all. There's a batter's skull. He also just has lethal over the next couple of turns, yeah. too. A lot of ways to cover it. Smith will pass the turn back over to Svochkin. Svochkin's drawing. Didn't get a great look. May have been a Vendillion click. Blue card nonetheless. Now it's time to fade seal again. Well, Smith will fetch a land out, go down to one. But I think this will be his last draw step of this particular game. Jace and these angel tokens, a little bit too much for Eric to overcome. Yeah, he is done for. So, Gabriel Schwachkin is going to win. Game number three here over Eric Smith. Miracles and Esper Deathblade are going to get ready for game number four. And it may not be the marathon match that we predicted. No, I mean, we are, we are cruising right along here. Only 41 minutes into the round. May have time to go to our backup match. Yeah. That backup match again is Alex Bistecki playing Grixis Delver against Matthew Long playing Blue Red Delver. They are in game number two. Bistecki with Grixis Delver currently up a game over Long and his Blue Red Delver deck. And that's a disheartening loss there for Smith because it didn't even involve Blood Moon. Yeah. I mean, Shvashkin just kind of just beat him. Yeah, Eric didn't really do much of anything. A couple of Death Rite Shamans, a Snapcaster Mage, and two Cops of Thoughtseize, and that was really it. Um, you know, when Shvashkin has Sensei's Divining Top, cards like Thoughtseize lose a lot of their impact. Uh, Shvashkin can do a lot to make sure that he's manipulating his draws in such a way where his best cards are not exposed to discard, and he casts everything on time. And when that's going on, the, the thought sees is for as good as they look when Shvatkin doesn't have Divine Top in play, uh, they become a lot more beatable from Shvatkin's side of the table. Well, these players are going to shuffle up here for game number four. And while they do so, it is a brand new day. Yes, it is. So we are going to see a brand new special here. 15% off promo basic lands. I make sure, you know, game day foils and judge promos and so forth all available 15% off right now at starcitygames.com. Check it out today. Remember, summer sale is going on 11 a.m. Eastern time every day. New sale goes up, limited time only. Go ahead and check it out now. Pretty awesome stuff, as Patrick did mention. Now, Patrick, don't you dare be sour. Feel the power of new lands coming out from Battle Zendikar. Yep. Did you see that yesterday? I did. Now, I'm, are, okay, so here's the question. Are you a full art land guy? I... I, I can get behind them. They're okay. not my first choice, but All I think right. they look good. All right. I just want to make sure because they got some sweet lands coming out of that set. If you guys did not see the packed release that took place yesterday, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yep. Are those cards awesome? Hopefully we'll have some time to go over some of that stuff today if we've got some downtime in between rounds or stuff like that. But wow, wow, wow. Am I excited for it? I was already yeah. a big Zendikar Maybe. fan anyway. But I am pretty hyped. If you were looking for a lot in the way of, you know, mechanics and themes, don't hold your breath. But if you just like seeing a lot of cool stuff that's coming back as reprints and so forth, uh, you will like the PAX announcement. We'll take a look at the brackets here for you guys very quickly. You see Eric Smith and Gabriel Svochkin, they're playing right now. That's our one versus eight. Alex Bistecki, Matthew Long, that's our backup match, and we'd have time to jump over there, which we think we might. Bistecki currently up a game. But this is the first half of the quarterfinals. The second half, well, that's got Jeffrey Rivestein. He's our number three overall seed against Steve Mann, the Florida native, former Players Championship competitor. He's playing Salty Delver, and then G Fabs himself, Gerard Fabiano, playing his good friend Joshua Taylor. That's Blue Red Delver. That's Grixis Delver, two versus seven. A lot of good matchups, a lot of blue 
A lot of blue. The color blue. The color blue is very powerful. Still very good in it, Legacy. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So we hope you're ready for as many brainstorms you can handle. Now, oddly enough, Jeffrey's deck is the real interesting one to me. A merfolk strategy in this blue meta game. Pretty good tournament for Island Walk. Uh, so yeah. A lot of blue decks trying to block. I might like that being a thing. You know, I don't think that Merfolk is the most powerful thing you can be doing in Legacy, but maybe for this particular tournament, pretty good spot to be in. Dex have as advocates. Made the top eight at an Invitational a couple of years back. I believe the one that Todd Anderson won in the hands of Benjamin Lundquist. Yes. Upended by Brian Brondwin. I was on the rail for that one. Look like these players are not happy with what they've seen, so... Some more shuffling here will take place. You know what? Hmm. While these guys shuffle, I think we got a little battle of Zendikar spoiler we can take a look at. Maybe the old Gideon. Maybe the old Gideon. Who knows? Now, you, you, you did the one told me about this. I didn't even know this was a thing. I missed it on Twitter yesterday. Yep. But the new Gideon is, well, it's pretty sweet. The ally of Zendikar. Now, this is honestly the only second, I think the second time you and I have both seen this. I saw this last night before I went to sleep, but four mana for, excuse me, four mana for loyalty. And so at a turn, you plus it. Get, Gideon becomes a 5-5 five, five human soldier ally creature with indestructible It's still a planeswalker, prevent all damage that would be dealt to him this turn. It's pretty basic for like all Gideons. They always turn to a creature yes. that can give the beatdowns. The zero ability, you put a 2-2 two, two white knight ally creature token on the battlefield. Uh, that text of ally is pretty important there because there are allies in Zendikar. There were in the first one, there are in this one. And then the minus four, you get an emblem with creatures you control get plus one, plus one. So glorious anthem effect. Yep. Indestructible glorious anthem, basically. That's true. That's and, true. And a, there's a nice split here between the plus power and the zero power because one's very good in control matchups and one's very good against other creature decks. Yeah. You need blockers to protect Gideon. You can just crank out some tutus. Your opponent's playing with a lot of sweepers and so forth. You can just be chipping in with an indestructible creature. And uh, that, the ultimate there, you can just do right away. You can also just get in the spots where you go, you know, plus Gideon attack. Next turn, make an anthem. Gideon's still in play. A lot of just very... Powerful, straightforward sequences you can generate with that card. I'd be surprised if that card's not very good. Yeah. I would be very surprised. Here's a thought seize from Smith. Since his Divine Top Snapcaster Mage, let's make it two Snapcaster Mage. It's a Pyroblast, a couple of lands here in Arid Mesa and Volcanic Island. I think Top is a good selection. Let's get that out of here. And Arid Mesa, pass the turn back over to Smith. Force Will to draw here for Eric. Here's the Deathrite Shaman. Misty Rainforest was the land. Monastery Mentor is the draw. You had a feeling it was going to come in. Yeah, Svatsen's hand is, is under attack in this matchup, and, and Smith does have a couple counter spells. So it's important for Svatsen to have a lot of individual cards so that can do heavy lifting, things like the Dillion Click, Snapcaster Mage, and Monastery Mentor fits the bill as well. Looks like Smith might be wanting to fire off that Wasteland, and I approve of this play. Yeah! Yeah, and you clearly do, yeah. too. Yeah. You don't know what he's going to do with that land. <laughs> Maybe cast a spell with it? Yeah, and you don't know what that spell can be, Actually, either. So you might as well just kill it. Yep. Here's a Stone Forge Mystic. Oh, happy days. Looks like Smith's going to search for the Savannah. Got it. Are yeah, you, you do. Are you a fan of the Savannah Underground Sea mana base? Love it. Also in this matchup, I do have to regularly check to make sure that the dual lands Eric is getting via the fetch lands are legal because he has some dual lands he can't get with some of his fetches. Yep. But Misty Rainforest for Savannah checks out. Well, but you can't Misty Rainforest for the scrub land, for example. Correct. So I got I got to be on the ball here. Yep. Smith will draw. Batter Skull in hand. Svotkin stuck on only one land. Very good wasteland for him. Yep. It's almost Batter Skull time. You saw Smith come across with Deathrite Shaman. Svotkin a little bit frustrated. Source of Plowshares to draw. Right on time. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> And the issue here is, you know, if he fetches for a Plains, then he's off of blue. If he fetches for a Tundra, then a second Wasteland definitely beats him. Yep. There's Batter Skull. Germ token on the way. 
Smith will draw a copy of Brainstorm. Some very weird games we have watched here. Here is a Brainstorm for Smith. He'll draw three, have to put two back. Flooded Strand is one, Force Will is two, Flooded Strand is three. Looks like Swords of Plowshares is going to go back. Looks like Smith may have a copy of True Nemesis in hand, too. But if he can keep double force, double blue card, he is probably in the driver's seat. Yeah, he can even, you know, if, uh, if this germ gets hit with Swords of Plowshares, which seems likely, he can also simply, you know, keep the True Name Nemesis, cast that, and have Force of Will back up, which is probably good enough here. Well, Shvachka did draw a land. It's a planes. That's helpful. That's at least a start. Smith will sacrifice his flooded strand. That'll help him shuffle away from the brainstorm. Underground seed, death right shaman activation. Swatch is going to go a little bit lower. Interesting that Swatch last turn didn't use the source of postures on anything. I wonder if he feels like he's in terminus or bust territory already. Smith will draw. Source of Plowshare still in hand. Looks like Deathrite Shaman is going to activate. There's Umazawa Shite. We're making a big move now. Mm -hmm. A little surprised that Shite is still in the deck, but if Shvachkin is bringing in cards like Vendillion Click and Monster and Mentor, the card does get a little bit better. Yeah, if you're expecting creatures on the other side. Uh, I don't love the equip there of the germ token. I kind of want to split them up. Yeah. Make it so you're either hitting for the most amount of damage or getting counters on your Jitte. Yeah. Would have rather seen Eric put that Umzao Shite on the Stoneforge Mystic. Because now he's got to dedicate mana to equipping it again next turn. Mm -hmm. Umzao Shite also might be a bit of a hedge here for Smith as it's something that gives him a shot to win if he's locked by Blood Moon. Okay, then... In there's a, there's a lot of small... In that regard, I can see leaving it in. Yeah, there's a lot of small considerations. I think Monastery Mentor plus Blood Moon is enough to, to change the equation. Because game one, it's among his worst cards. Yep. But I think it gets a little bit better for him post-board. There's an equip and a beat down. Smith will pass the turn back. Deathrite Shaman at the ready to activate. Shvachkin down to nine. Getting very close to being dead. Source of Plowshares will be removed. Deathrite Shaman will bring Shvachkin down to seven. Be able to draw to copy a Tundra. He needs land, he needs Terminus, he needs a lot of different things right now. But well, now, even Blood Moon is not good enough because Shvachkin is losing to the board. Yep. That's the thing about Blood Moon. It is very, very good this matchup, but it is a little bit time sensitive. Normally, that's not going to be an issue. Yeah. I mean, when you play against decks like Team Delver, for example, they can amass a really significant board before you lock them with Blood Moon. That's rare to happen here. I mean, we played a game that went on for many, many turns. Uh, but eventually, Smith does get some stuff into play. And, and you do need to get Blood Moon into play ahead of that. Uh, Swatchkin couldn't do it that game. Well, he got some stuff into play and was able to get the job done. So Eric Smith, Gabriel Swatchkin, they're all tied up 2-2. One game left to go here in this quarterfinal match between Esper Deathblade and Miracles. So take a look at the sideboards here one more time because Eric is going back to the drawing board. It looks like Gabriel will be as well. And, you know, there is Jace. There is Abrupt Decay. And a bevy of other options here for both players. But Blood Moon hasn't shown up yet. No. Uh, uh, Gabriel, you know, in the post-board game so far, we've seen them split a pair of games kind of straight up. I mean, that game was not great for Schwatkin, but, but Wasteland is in the deck for a reason. Schwatzkin did win one of the games straight up, and then there was the game loss in game two for Smith. So it has not reared its head yet, but Schwatzkin has been able to pick up a post-board game legit without the need of Blood Moon. And with him on the play, it makes the threat of him firing off a of Blood Moon much, much riskier on Smith's side of the table. And again, a lot of his cards get much more dangerous to play. Stoneforge missing in particular, great on the play on turn two, much, much riskier on the draw for Smith. Well, Schwatzkin will be on the play here for game number five, the most important of them all. 
These players are ready to go. We'll very quickly talk about the Star City Games newsletter. It is your source for Magic the Gathering news, and it is free to sign up for. Yeah, all the best from Star City Games, cultivated by Cedric Phillips here. You get the best information about what's going on on the Open Series, including a match of the week, exclusive deck lists, and advice from some of your favorite premium columnists, an exclusive cardboard crack comic, and best of all, signing up is free over at StarCityGames.com slash newsletter. You'll be able to find the results of this tournament. Match of the week will likely be from this tournament as well, so definitely Sign on up, starcitygames.com slash newsletter. And as we like to say, you're going to be on the internet anyway. Right. You're so. already doing nothing. Yeah. Idling around YouTube videos. Pictures of cats. Yep. Listening to music. So just take the five minutes. It's way less than five minutes. All right. Take the, take the three minutes. If it takes you five minutes to register, you probably, there's nothing for you to do with a newsletter <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so now you're pushing people away. Bring them, bring them back in. Bring dot back com in. slash newsletter. There's a lot of stuff there. They're, see, they're back now. Perfect. Perfect. That's, information. That's just, that's the script in front of Various, them. you know, information links to things, <laughs> I assume. <laughs> Sarcygames.com. <laughs> We're going to have to rewrite that script. Listen. You, <laughs> We're going to have to rewrite that script a little bit. There's some holes there. Could be a little bit more if you, streamlined. If you want me promoting the products, I'll fire in in good faith once. You ask me to come back, it starts getting worse and worse. Like I said, we're going to work on that script. Work, don't, on, work on that contract. Don't we'll, ask me twice. Okay. I'm going to keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> I will keep that Do in mind. Do not ask me twice. For future promotional work. This is a product that exists. Here is the URL. <laughs> Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow. Shvachkin on the play. <laughs> yep. Sensei's Divine Top, a great place to start, obviously. Yep. But you know, these, these games have been weird. You know, he's never really gotten a, a stranglehold on any of the games, right? You know, there, there was the one mishap with Eric in the sideboarding. And then the game where Eric lost, where they played, Eric just didn't really do anything. So well, we haven't really seen much of a Miracles game. We got, we got to see what Sensei's Divining Top can do for Shvotkin in the matchup, which is really blunt the impact of Eric's discard spells. And that's one of the best weapons he brings to the table. The Thought Seasons are dis disastrous for Shvotkin when he does not have Divining Top because his hands are going to be a little disorganized. He's going to have random Miracle cards and stuff like that hanging out there, and uh, a lot of his hands are only going to have one premium card. And information is very valuable for Smith as well in the order in which he deploys his threats. But with Divining Top, he can play very effectively off the top of his deck. There was a spot where his hand was literally all lands yep. after a Thought Seize, but he had Divining Top and was very easily able to generate enough resources to win. Oh, both these players are going to get ready to take a look at the openers. Looks like Smith is happy with his, Shvachkin unhappy with his. So, Going to go a little bit lower. Will Gabe. Again, our other match, and it looks like we're going to have plenty of time to jump that way. Matthew Long, Alex Bistecki, they're still in game number two. Oh. So we are not going anywhere. As Grixis Delver by Alex Bistecki is up at game. And appears in game number two, he has written a note to himself that says no more fetches, which leads me to believe perhaps he's won life. Ah. We will find out soon enough. We expected this one to be the long one. I know. We're, we're looking at five games done in an hour and change. Yeah. For Miracles, that's impressive. Yeah. Plenty of time to go over to the Delver matches. Yeah, it's not, I guess, for Death Blades particularly fast either. No. Although it's, you know, for, for a blue deck with counter spells and Jason, it, it's, it's proactive. Well, it's, 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 not an sitting, it's an aggressive blue deck. It's not sitting on its heels all day long, you know? And you have cards like Death Right Shaman where they can speed up the clock and... I think it gets a bad rap. I think the deck is faster than it gets credit for. The mirror matches of Esper Deathblade can be excruciating, but Esper Deathblade against a normal deck is, it's not like the deck takes that long to win or lose. Shvashkin happy enough. We're underway here in game number five. Winner of this plays against the winner of Matthew Long and Alex Kostecki. One step closer, $10,000. They like this on a card and invite to our players' championship. Arid Mesa is where Shvashkin did begin. Here's a flooded strand.
There's a flooded strand there for Smith. And now it's a stone for Mystic. I have to imagine Eric has force of will plus blue card in hand. You don't think he'd tap out for this? I think Just it's very unlikely. Sure. I think that, you know, you can reason with yourself as a player of just saying, you know, if you have one of your two blood moons, good for you. You win. Yep. But he does have force of will in his hand, and it appears a blue card. Counterbalance the draw. Shvachkin sacrificing those two fetch lines very quickly. It looks like he's basic hunting. Yep. But none of those are red sources of mana. So no Blood Moon on the way. There's three mana. Vendillion Click looking to go after that Batter Skull. Most likely. Looks like Eric might fight over this. Force of Will. Smith going to have to take one to cast it. The question is, what card is he going to remove? He's got some options as he does shuffle them back and forth. And it looks like Medillion Click has been countered. And Smith can be fairly aggressive using the Force of Will in that spot because that was a great window for Shvatskin to try to stick Blood Moon if he had it. So he probably doesn't have it in the hand. I like Smith activating Stoneforge Mystic right now in case there's another Medillion Click. Though, this does get a little bit dicey because of a card like Wear and Tear and Council's Judgment. So there's some upside, there's some downside to this. Yep. It's really only Council's judgment for the swing card, because wear tear is going to get you regardless. Yeah, sure. And there's one wear tear and one click left in the deck, so. And Eric Smith had to pitch his own Vendillion click to that force of will. So that's no longer an option for him. Red mana is here for Svachkin. And now here's Monastery Mentor. Brainstorm for Smith on the end step. That'll resolve. So Force of Will, Brainstorm, and Source of Plowshares added to Eric's hand. Pretty good. Yep. Definitely wants to hunt for answers to the Mentor, because this is a card that can run away with the game uncontested. I actually don't think Svachkin's hand is very good at capitalizing on it at the moment. I think he's looking at lands and a Snapcaster Mage with nothing to do with it, but still. Smith doesn't know that. Yeah, I'd still be perfectly fine getting that thing off the battlefield. That's exactly what Eric's going to do. Mentor will have to be removed from the graveyard there for Shvachkin. Of course, Swords to Plush out. Swords to Plush, excuse me, does exile, and you don't want to have that work in a dig through time. Shvachkin will draw. Mechanic Island Sensei's Divining Top is the draw for the turn. Now we know that small, we don't know, excuse me, Smith did, did just see a force of will in that brainstorm. It's unclear if he's added to his hand or is on top of his deck, but it looks like he does have force of will and brainstorm in hand. He's going to sacrifice the Arid Mason. Maybe cast a brainstorm here and get a fresh look at some cars as there's an underground sea. Yep, here's a brainstorm. Three fresh ones coming here for Smith. Pluto Delta's one. Doesn't look like any blue cards there, though. So maybe top is resolving. Maybe not. And there it goes to the force of will. Now here's counterbalance. Smith had to remove true name that time. Mm. Now we have a dig through time for Eric Smith. Going to leave brainstorm in the graveyard. Since his divine top is the reveal, dig through time will resolve. So Smith will take a look at the top seven, get to take two with him. To me, Eric Smith is ahead right now, but not by much. Things could still get broken up here, and Blood Moon, in concert with some removal spells or Terminus, 
Schwarzkin can go from on the ropes to having Eric locked very fast. Yeah. Now, one of the cards that Eric was able to find in this day through time is a pithing needle, which I would have some interest in. But the problem here is that if he casts it, it gets countered by counterbalance. Right. Needle's off the table here. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, he can't cast it right now, nor can he cast it after the fact. Yeah, so that's the big problem there. Alex Wistecki with his no-fetch paper mm -hmm. does win game number two. So he is up 2-0 right now over Matthew Long. Grixis Delver up 2-0 over Blue Red Delver. So we'll be heading to game number three, I presume, in just a bit over there. There's the top. So the soft lock is in play. It's not a hard lock at this point because, well, Smith has things on the table. I'm a little surprised Schwatzkin wouldn't go ahead and just use the top right away. Because if counterbalance is in the top three, I would strongly consider just, excuse me, if Blood Moon's in the top three, I would strongly consider just putting it into play. Just slamming on down, sure. Well, here's an attack for five. Schwarzkin's going to have to take five. All right. Caracas the draw. I believe Gabriel on top of his deck has a copy of Entreat the Angels. Yep. And so that's the big plan here. Yeah. Smith shrugged his shoulders, tried to attack for lethal. Activate top. Here's Entreat. Is this going to resolve? How much is Svach going to do it for, and is it going to resolve? That's the question. X is two. Still playing around Spell Pierce here. This could be really bad news for Eric Smith. I suppose Fluster Storm as well could be on the radar. Yep. Just some sort of tax encounter spell. Yep. So the other side of it is two angels may not be enough to get it done here. Yeah. However, here are two angels. There are your blocks. I suppose in the sequence, he doesn't have to worry about source to plowshares because he's still got the divining top on top of the deck. Yep. So one mana spells are not going to be very impressive. Stoneforge Mystic here. That's going to resolve. Smith's going to go grab that Jite. Eric knows he's got more work to do. He was close. And on Schwarzkin's side of the table, now Blood Moon, while still very powerful, isn't enough to win the game on its own. Eric can just move the Batter Skull onto the Stoneforge Mystic, use Umazawa's Jite, win that way. But if you find something like Wear Tear alongside Blood Moon, uh, again, Swatchkin can flip this game around very fast. Smith will sacrifice Blue to Delta. We'll get a, a tropical island off the fence. A little pause there just to make sure that that was legal to get. Yeah, clear for takeoff. Yep. Foshkin working on very few resources. But we're in the draw step here with the Snapcaster Mage. Pyroblast is the card that was revealed to Snapcaster Mage. Air targeting Brainstorm with the Snapcaster Mage, but that's going to be hard to resolve now. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. Uh, technically, Gabriel did know that was a Pyroblast. Mm -hmm. Probably would have preferred not to reveal it. So there's the top being paid for via Caracas. Pass the turn back. 
Smith, of course, not going to flash back the brainstorm because he knows there's a one on top. Right. Schwachkin would have to miss the counterbalance trigger. He'd have to miss a lot for that to work. Doesn't seem worth the attempt. Might be able to use that brainstorm in the graveyard down the road for Dick through time or another Snapcaster Mage. Smith going to attempt to equip Batterskull. Looks like that's going to work. And there's a lot of really good ones here for Schwachkin. This would be an insane opportunity for wear tear. Yeah. Terminus isn't bad either. He can clean up everything. That's what he's going to attempt to do. Draw a card, cast a Terminus. All the creatures will go to the bottom of the deck. He's getting a lot of breathing space here. Yep. Uh, again, Eric is definitely not beat here, but Gabriel's getting some breathing space here to activate this Divining Top a bunch. This feels a lot more like Miracles. Eric came really close to getting to the finish line here. Here's Liliana. He can still get to it, but boy, is it going to be tough. Svotskin will spin top, counterbalance trigger on the stack. No three-mana spell there. Two counterbalances and a pyroblast. But Liliana's not the end-all be-all right now. It's, it's fine, but it's not anything special, really. Yeah. One of the more mediocre Lilianas you're going to find. Here's a Snapcaster Mage in response to Liliana. Smith will discard Deathrite. Shaman knows he can't cast that. Here's Stoneforge Mystic. Now, there is a two up there for Schwachkin. It's counterbalanced. See you later, Stoneforge. And now Schwachkin is empty-handed. Yep. But with Divining Top in play, that's not a bad spot to be in. Two counterbalances, Pyroblast. We'll see which card... Gabe wants to draw for his turn. He'll leave Pyroblast on top of the deck, so that's going to be the draw. Two counterbalances on top of the deck right now, and the third card down is a mystery. Snapcaster Mage will attack. Liliana going to go down to two. To Smith we go. Can Eric cross the finish line here? He's going to start with a dig through time which is bad news for him. Now, Shvotchkin's going to start by spinning top. Monastery Mentor's going to go on top of the deck, but here's a Pyroblast in just a moment, because you can't let Dig resolve. Not in this spot. Yep. And I think Eric realizes maybe I was better off activating my Liliana first. The thing is, it's just not... So he knew that the Pyroblast was floating there. I think Eric just felt there's no way he would have drawn a Pyroblast. It's so powerful for him to have Pyroblast floating amongst his top three cards, something he can get at a moment's notice, that there's just... He just didn't believe that that could have been the card that Gabriel put in his hand. Sure. Batterskull's going to come back. Smith's going to recast it. He's hoping it resolves. It's a way for him to try to win. He knows he's in some serious trouble. You can see the body language right now. Yep. It was looking real good for him. So Batter Skull's in. Svochkin is going to draw a card with top. He's going to get ready to play top again. Yeah, no token yet, because you haven't cast the top yet. Because that's the thing that you can do with this deck is, you know, end of turn, draw the top and do your thing. So we know what he's trying to set up. He's getting a little yeah. ahead of himself, but here's a brainstorm. And, and from this spot, if, if Gabriel, for example, finds a second copy of Sensei's Divining Top... Oh, super he, happy fun time. He starts going off, and, and not even Batter Skull is going to be able to erase that sort of setup. Yeah. Now, keep in mind, Smith is at 31, but that setup with Monastery Mentor and those tops, doesn't matter what you're at. And there are just so many draws now in Gabriel's deck that are going to be hard for Eric to beat. Wear, tear, Council's judgment. Uh, I still think Blood Moon is going to be hard for Eric to get out of the spot, even though he has Batter Skull in play. 
Here's a top. Another Monk on the way. Some prowess triggers. Mentor is a 4-4. The active Monk is a 3-3. So Foxing is just going to pass the turn. The sleeper hold is coming in. Here's Brainstorm. Trigger. Take a look. Smith is trying to set up Jite. He's hoping that Shvachkin doesn't have a one on top. He's got a one on top, but Sensei's divining top. And, that, and that's a really bad one for Eric to see here. Here's Jite. Yep, and it, you can see Eric Smith is very frustrated right now with how this game has gone. There's a two. And that second top means now Monster and Mentor gets to go nuts next turn. Smith will pass the turn back. It well, might he'll well attack first, yeah. No prowess triggers coming from Spotskin's side of the table, yep. so it's, it's free to attack there. I think Spots can just put the top back on top of the deck. Smith is up to 35. You see the light tolls here, 35 to 5. Okay, we'll draw a card. So swords and top in hand. And Smith does not have enough mana here to bring the batter's call back to his hand and recast next turn. So Gabriel's got two clean turns of being able to go off with Monastery Mentor here, and that may be all the time he needs to set mm -hmm. up a kill, even with Eric at 39 life. There's top. That's going to bring a monk token. And I think he knows his next card down is top. Eric got so close. There's top again. So every time he does this, he's going to get prowess triggers and a monk for every mana that he pays. And that is going to do it. Gabriel Schwatzkin is going to win this match here over Eric Smith. Three games to two. Good friends do battle, but only one can walk away the winner, and it's our Miracles player. It's our number eight overall seed, knocking out the former Invitational Champion. Congratulations to Gabriel Schwatzkin. Also, congratulations to Eric Smith on a great tournament. Ran through the Swiss rounds, first overall seed, uh, but a game lost there in game two, and then a really painful loss there in game five, where, you know, he had a great opening. It looked like he was getting he was going to be able to kill Gabriel there at several spots and slowly but surely the game bogged down and he could never get in that last attack with batter skull and once monastery mentor showed up uh, Eric really couldn't offer much in the way of good attacks and it was only a matter of time before Spotskin found a second copy of Sensei's Divine Top and Eric couldn't compete with that. You had a feeling mentor was going to come in and it's sort of that exact reason the games do get a little bit disjointed sometimes but that card's got some amazing closing speed, as we just saw. And a, a five-game set with Foskin winning and Blood Moon never appearing once is not what I would have predicted here, but yep. uh, really well-played match there by Foskin, uh, particularly with the setting up that, that fifth game there, which, you know, he took some risks. I think he was, a, he was definitely aired on the side of caution.